Hello again, glad to see you made it to the second video. If you didn't watch the first one, I highly recommend you stop watching this right now and go watch that one. So last time I gave you a small introduction to what we are going to be doing in this series. Today I will be talking about the software we will be using. I promise we will be getting to the programming soon, but I can't stress enough how important this information is. So just like last time, feel free to do something while I speak. First, let's discuss Java and how it plays a role in what we are going to be doing. I'm not going to be covering the complex technical background of Java, we will only be covering how it will be used in your programs. So Java is one of the many programming languages that exists. So what makes it unique? Well, honestly, not much. There are definitely differences between Java and other languages, but if you know how to program in one language, you can pretty much code in any language. The concepts are the same, however, the execution is slightly different. If you have Minecraft installed on your computer, you most likely have Java installed. This version of Java is actually different from the version of Java we will be using. The Java you have downloaded on your computer right now is known as the Java Runtime Environment, or JRE. There are other components to this environment, but right now we'll only be scraping the surface. Essentially, the JRE is the skeleton of your project. It does the complicated stuff so you don't have to. Remember last time when I said high-level languages communicate with low-level languages? This is the center of that information. The JRE does much more than this, but for today this is all I'm going to say on the topic. The version of Java we will be using is the Java Development Kit, or JDK. JDK is a collection of tools and libraries for programmers to utilize. It consists of things like methods for math calculations, manipulation of dates and times, calculating vectors, manipulating collections, managing files, formatting numbers, and a lot more. Just like any other piece of software, there are different versions of JDK. JDK versions are forwards compatible, but not backwards compatible. Pre-Minecraft 1.17, Java 8 was the standard. As of 1.17, PaperMC, a bucket fork, has been updated to Java 11. This means any Java 8 plugins will no longer run on these servers. However, this isn't the most recent version either. The current version of Java is 16. So, which version should you choose for your plugin? Well, the answer is it depends. If you are making a public plugin, you are going to have to choose between Java 8 and Java 11. I recommend using 11 because the industry appears to be shifting in that direction with many server hosts updating to support PaperMC 1.17. With that said, there are many useful methods in the updated versions of Java that can be utilized if you use the same JDK and JRE in conjunction. If you would like to use an updated version of Java that contains the method you need, feel free to use it. If you would like me to tell you which one to use, try Java 11. If you have no need for other versions, then stick with it. If you would like to use some more advanced recent methods, you will need to update. That's about all the Java talk I can handle. Let's talk about the next piece of software we will be utilizing. That is your integrated development environment or your IDE. Your IDE is essentially an extremely advanced text editor and file manager. Which IDE you choose is extremely important. It can make a huge difference in the level of your productivity. If you choose a poorly made IDE, your ability to program will be slowed tremendously. So what IDE should you use? I highly recommend using IntelliJ if you're using another IDE such as Visual Studio Code or Eclipse, I suggest you give IntelliJ a try. If you don't like it, you can change right back. Why do I advocate for IntelliJ so much? Well, I have used around 10 IDEs in my programming experience for a variety of languages and none of them come close to what IntelliJ offers. I'm not being paid or have any affiliation with JetBrains or IntelliJ, I just really love the software that they have made. So what sets it apart from the others? Well honestly there's a lot, so I'm going to give you my number one reason. IntelliJ has the best autocode completion of any IDE I have personally used. 
I personally like it better than Kite. This feature alone is enough for me to recommend IntelliJ for you, not to mention it's 100% free. Feel free to do your own research if you would like, but that is my recommendation. Speaking of doing your own research, I suggest you do a large amount of that. If you are only following along and watching what I show you in this video series, you will be severely limiting your knowledge. This is not because I will be doing a poor job of explaining things or not covering certain topics, rather because you will have a deeper understanding of what we are going over, resulting in significantly less frustration. You are learning a complex skill, and for every bit of information you acquire, the easier the learning process will be. If you are looking for a good source of information, check out Cody Simpson's video playlist on YouTube. I will link it down below. He has excellent bucket and Java tutorials, as well as many other languages. Finally, let's talk about how your IDE in Java will be communicating with Minecraft, the bucket API. For reasons I do not want to get into, you are unable to legally download the bucket API online. The way around this is building the API on your computer, which will be covered in this series. Enough about that, let's talk more about the API and what it does. The API consists of what I'm going to call two levels of code. I'm not talking about high level and low level code, rather more similar to back end and front end code. This back end code I am talking about is called Net Minecraft Server Code or NMS. This is the Minecraft part of the bucket API. This code is obfuscated, so it is extremely difficult to work with, and on top of that, it changes significantly depending on what version of the game you are running. We will not be covering any NMS code, as the Bucket API is the wrapper for this code, and most things can be done using this API. Since 1.13, the API has retained backwards compatibility. At the time of writing this, 1.17 is not released, so I am not 100% sure this will continue, but it is very likely. Before you go, I want to give you a piece of advice that will greatly help you digest the information I will be giving you as we move forward. You will need to be consciously processing the information I am giving you, and thinking of how you can apply it in other ways. If you just watch the videos and type what I type, you will not learn anything. If you don't understand a concept I go over, rewind it. Still don't understand? Rewind again. Still don't understand? Do independent research over the topic. There are a lot of important keywords I am going to be using and you need to know what they mean to fully understand and comprehend what I am saying. Do not move on until you fully understand what that episode covered. With that said, to help you in this process of retaining information, I suggest that after every episode, you try to recreate what you just wrote from memory and explain it to yourself as you go. I promise if you do this, you will glide through these lessons with ease. Before we part, I just want to remind you that you may feel frustrated and lost at first. This is completely normal and anyone who tells you they don't struggle with new skills is just lying to themselves. With that said, that's all for today and I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.